Hey guys, we're back for some more standard. So I shifted over to the Boros Humans deck, and I think this deck is really well positioned right now, um, partially due to the fact that uh, counter spells are starting to come back into the format. We're seeing a lot of uh, like blue-white control running No More Lies. Um, some uh, blue-black decks are running counter spells also. And so I think that um, having access to four copies of Caverns of Souls is going to be really powerful. The other thing is there's a huge kind of new threat in the meta right now, which is this really fast, very um, consistent combo deck that uses the graveyard. And um, I think it's... Uh, I can't remember the name of the spell, uh, but basically um, reenact the crime, I think is what it is. Anyways, it uh, can go off in one turn on turn four. And one of the best answers in the whole format is Thalia. Just by taxing their spells, um, when they get out the Conspiracy Unraveler, all of their spells cost zero uh, with the converted, uh, with the alternate cost of using um, the Collect Evidence 10, but Thalia still taxes on an extra mana onto all those spells. And so you can really slow them down. And this is also excellent against control decks as well. In addition, I've also brought in two copies of Unlicensed Hearse, which is really good at kind of going long against like Azorius Control when they have uh, Memory Deluge and they want to flash it back. And it's also really good at just denying that combo deck the ability to go off and other kind of grave graveyard strategies. So also gives this deck a little bit more game. Like if you get kind of board wiped into nothing, you can start using your graveyard to build up um, a decent sized vehicle. So um, just want to say, first of all, I want to just give a shout out to all of you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me up to this point. It's really been a just incredible journey, and I am so excited that I'm almost at 1,000 subscribers. I think I'm at like 10 subscribers away from 1,000 subscribers, so super excited about that. If you are new here to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, I hope you enjoy my content. If you do, please consider subscribing. Um, and also maybe sharing it with a friend of yours who might like my content. Um, if you you know have uh, things you want to add or put in, I love comments, so please feel free to comment. Um, give it a thumbs up if you enjoy my content. And uh, yeah, thanks for being here. And for my returning viewers, guys, thank you so much for being here. You guys are the backbone of my channel. I could not do this without you, so thank you from the bottom of my, of my heart. Um, okay, let's get into the deck. I did make a sideboard for you best of three guys. Um, so I don't want to exclude you in any way, shape, or form. So the deck is kind of, um, kind of, it kind of harks back to the Boros Humans deck that I built oh, almost about a month ago. Um, and just when I realized, you know, how powerful Imidane's Recruiter is in this meta and the just incredible consistency of the the mana base that you have access to for the first time for Boros in a long time. And so since all the creatures in the deck are humans, um, the only non-creature spells are two copies of Unlicensed Hearse, which is colorless, so you don't even need to have correct mana to play it. Um, we get to run four copies of Cavern of Souls and four copies of Secluded Courtyard, naming human. Um, Cavern of Souls is really big game now because we can prevent counter spells, which is just super huge. And then we also have three Battlefield Forge, just so we... Um, it's nice to not have the luxury of having to play the full playset, just so we can kind of help ourselves in like the mono-red matchup. Um, two copies of Sundown Pass and three copies of Murex, which can give us um, one man of any color the turn it comes in to help fix, and then also go along by making creatures. And then... One Aganjo and five planes. And this gives us access to um, 17 sources, or actually, excuse me, 16 sources of red mana for Imidane's Recruiter, which hopefully should be enough to always have access to it. And then all uh, 22 land here can cast um, white mana. For the creature suite, we've got four copies of Warden Leader Sky. Um, four copies of Novice Inspector, which is a really nice addition with the new set and works incredibly well with Warden, um, as you've probably seen in all those uh, Boros Convoke decks, which are really taking advantage of it. But it's great here, too. And then we've got four copies of Lunark Veteran to help kind of pad the matchup against Mono Red and Boros uh, Convoke. 
and then two copies of Hopeful Initiate to help with any kind of like artifacts or enchantments that are problematic. Um, it's nice if you um, are up against like blue white control and they have like temporary lockdown. If you have two counters between like your warden and your initiate and three mana up, you can just leave that up and be ready for it. So you can avoid the blowout. And then we have four copies of Coppercoat Vanguard, which puffs everything in the deck. Two copies of Adversary, which provides a little bit more lifelink and can also uh, be a nice mana sink late game. And then four copies of Thalia, and I believe that you do want the, the full playset. This card is basically like, <laughs> it is like the best it has ever been in a long time in Standard right now because of the insane um, turn four combo deck that is running around. And then we have four copies of Adeline, which has always been amazing, always will be amazing. Four copies of Imidane's, Imidane's Recruiter, and also four copies of Knight Errant of Eos to go and find whatever it is we need. So that's the deck. For the sideboard, we have four copies of Get Lost. This is kind of a catch-all that can deal with Planeswalkers, Enchantments, Creatures, and it's great against like Temporary Lockdown. Um, yeah, it's kind of sort of an all-around card. Um, we have three copies of Invasion of Goba Khan to try to um, push back the timing on some board wipes or other problem cards. Also giving our creatures the ability to have a nice little um, protection blanket with the light shield array. And then we have one copy of the Stone Brain, which is sort of a nice one of to um, basically go and search for Atraxa, remove them from their your opponent's deck so they can't just get you if you're up against like Domain. Um, you can use this to get, you know, whatever the combo piece, probably reenact the crime or something like that from the combo deck. You can use this to get like Jace in like the blue-white mill deck so they can't mill you out. Um, one copy of Soul Guide Lantern, which is another nod towards this um, insanely fast and consistent combo deck, where if you have this, you can just hold it ready to exile their graveyard in response to them trying to reenact the crime to get their whole thing started. And then we have two copies of Anointed Peacekeeper, uh, Peacekeeper which is more taxing on mana, and four copies of Knockout Blow to really cinch up the mono-red matchup. So that is your sideboard. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into some games. I've been jamming a couple games with this here today, hoping to stay in the top 1200. I think right now, right around 1050 Mythic. So hoping that we can stay in the top 1200 for the end of the month. Crossing my fingers here. But I also do want to say that I really appreciate all of your comments. Um, you know, I want to thank... Um, you know, the guy who did a shout out there um, for his mono blue deck that is running like Levitating Statue. That is such a cool idea of a deck. I built a copy of it this morning and I couldn't really get it working super well, but that's I think mostly because I'm just not really much of like a control player. Um, it was a very powerful deck and I definitely had some convincing wins. So cool idea and thank you for sharing. Um, all right, this hand looks good. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, blue white control or something like this. I think he actually might be running Jess Guy. I think I might have run into this before. But whatever the case is. So it is possible that he's revving up for a um, turn three temporary lockdown, and we don't really have quite enough of a setup to prevent it. But I think that maybe the play here, like we do want to keep pushing. Um, yeah, I think maybe it's worth putting out one more Vanguard and then keeping the rest back. I guess we could also just like play initiate and then hold the mana up. Okay, he's going for no more lies. That's fine. I think that like the fact that he is playing no more lies tells me that he doesn't have temporary lockdown in his hand, which means that extending here is just fine. Yeah, 
And with that information, we are going to go full bore ahead. It is a little bit of a risky play here, but again, just based on his play, I don't think he had the lockdown in his hand at that moment. He might have drawn into it, but yeah, he is just guy. That's right. Okay, he does not have it, so it looks like he's got Wandering Emperor or something like it. And I don't think there's really anything... I guess we could, like, go for another Vanguard. We could, like, go Inspector, draw a card, um, try to hit, like, another Vanguard. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that would affect the board right now. I don't really think there is. I think we just push. Um, he can like block one guy and die. He, if he has Emperor, then he doesn't have enough to target anything. So I think we just push and see what happens here. And then leave up Murex. He might have like get lost. Yeah, so I think that's going to do it. And I think that, like, you know, try to see those kind of decisions. It's like, if they're going to try to counter something, you know they probably don't have um, mass removal on three. Because if they did, they would just let you play it and then, you know, wipe your whole board. So that's kind of like what allowed me the information to extend safely. Uh, yeah, this hand looks fine. A little bit slow, no one drop, but I think we're okay with that. Okay, would have been nice to have that last turn, but we're happy to play out Thalia here. Thalia is still super great against Mono Red or Gruul. So I think we want to just get, yeah, Veteran and Hearse going here. Oh, never mind. I, I can't play Hearse because of Thalia here. That's fine. Um, I think just getting the, the Veteran going is good. So I think the plan here, uh, what we could do, actually, we could just attack get the damage in and then replay Thalia. And I think it wouldn't necessarily be wrong. Um, also getting the like waste removal on Thalia and then replay it is kind of great. But this is sort of a nice use of our mana that we're not really doing anything else with. So I'm actually happy to just get the free attack here. Seems a little weird, but... Get the extra life gain. Every single point matters, so... Ooh, and the festivities is really nasty. Yep. <laughs> that was that was good. Yeah, and I think the addition of end the festivities into the red mono red decks, I'm really happy if um if that's an effect that I've sort of helped make here with um kind of that uh that introduction where I've added in um, and the festivities into my red deck. 
But uh, yeah, it's really good right now, especially with um, all the Boros Convoke decks running around and... We're probably just dead here, unfortunately, to end the festivities, but... they have, like, anything, we're just dead. Yeah, and I think that's not gonna do it here, unfortunately. So, we will move on to the next game. Good Beats by Mono Red. And if you are playing Mono Red, I highly recommend running End the Festivities in your list. It's really good right now. So I don't know if you, any of you guys are limited players, but I know that this weekend is going to be the Arena Open, and I strongly urge you to at least try your hand um, at uh, Murders at Karloff Manor Limited. I usually try to do like maybe one run. Um, I, I'm, I don't have a lot of limited under, under my belt right now, but it has been a really fun set. And I do like it as a, as a set in general for limited. So if any of you guys are gonna be playing in the event, you know, put it in the comments. Um, I, I'll definitely be supporting you, so. Hope you do well. Um, yeah, I think we can't keep this hand because of the double Mirics. And this does happen periodically, which is unfortunate, but I think we got a mulligan. Okay, that's a lot better. I think I'm going to throw back probably one Inspector here, just so I have like a nice sort of mix of different effects. Um, that being said, actually, Initiate is not that great here, so maybe throw the Initiate back. We don't really have any way to grow it right now. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna throw the initiate back, actually. Okay, Mono Red, The Return. The other thing that I really like about Boros Humans is that the mana is so good, and like there's so little life that you have to pay just to cast your own spells, which feels amazing. I have a whopping, I think, three pain lands in the entire deck. And then getting in with a veteran, I never intend to block with this if I can avoid it. Okay, Picnic Ruiner deck. Whew. Um, yeah, we just go for Night Errant here. Just try to set up. And then hope to draw into a land eventually. So I guess, yeah, we want the Adversary for the lifelink. And probably just another Vanguard here. We really need a Thalia to start taxing their mana. Like, Thalia is so good in this matchup. So I think, yeah, unfortunately we just take it here. We just try to race him. Definitely going to be tough to race, that's for sure. Um, can they do 14 to us next turn? Almost certainly. So, I guess we could go like Vanguard and then just push with these guys. Uh, we could also go Adversary. The problem with Adversary is if 
they have like this double strike it's just we're not even gonna get any like, benefit out of it um and i kind of want like the four toughness here just to you know to lessen the chance of us just straight up losing to their uh their picnic ruiner hmm yeah, this is tough I, you know i guess on the off chance that they don't kill us, maybe it's better here to just go for adversary. Yeah, I think I'm actually just gonna go adversary here. Cause that lifelink might really, really matter. And then I think I just push with Knight Errant here. So if they have like double pump on Runer, I think that's probably for sure lethal, unfortunately. Um, this is gonna get double strike also, but doesn't have trample yet. All right, well there's 16 points. Okay, the fact that they're not attacking with everything means they don't have a pump spell. Because if they had a pump spell, they would just get in with everyone and win. Um, I think. So, we're gonna block accordingly. If we block just with one... So, like, if we draw land next turn, how does this go? They block Knight Errant, and then they take three, five, seven, eleven. It's not enough. Crap. Yeah, I don't really know how we get out of this. Um, I don't think throwing away our other Inspector there is necessarily... I think we just block like that. And go to one. Yeah, because they didn't have, if they had pump, they would have attacked with everyone. Okay, we got the land. Unfortunately, I think we're just short. So, yeah, because they block with Swift Spear and it's, and we just lose. Well, we got close. So I'm wondering if we if we played like Vanguard last turn, I think actually the, the unfortunately the correct play was probably playing Vanguard next last turn and then attacking with our three uh, little guys to push more damage so we could actually um, swing for lethal here, because now we can play like Veteran and Vanguard, um, and we I suppose we'll gain like four here and go to five. I don't think it's possible to win here. Actually, we go to six. So now, even if they have no pump, they still have functionally 16 damage coming at us. And yeah, we just can't. They have to like not block here. So yeah, I think in hindsight, the right play would have been playing the Vanguard earlier over the adversary, since the adversary couldn't profitably block because of the double strike. Unfortunately, that is going to do it, so sequencing error there, I think, on, on my part. But at any rate, I'm really loving the deck. 
and hope you guys try it out and yeah if you like boros again like the the land is just great all right let's do another one but yeah this deck has been super fun i uh i love the mana base i think it really has some good answers to things in the format right now hmm. Okay, this hand looks good. We've got stuff to do. So I wonder if this is like Rakdos control. Oh, maybe not. Scamp makes me think that they might be going like heavy spells. So maybe Thalia is really good here. Then again, this can just attack and kill Thalia. And I feel like this is a pretty good warden turn. So let's just do that. I guess we're gonna have enough here to be able to attack with Inspector. So let's just get in with Inspector first. <coughs> okay, that's a good one, but we want some more land, I think. Okay, so he's probably got Monstrous Rage here. Um, if he wants to use it, I'm totally fine with it. I think we just let it through. I suppose we could have forced the issue by blocking the Scamp. So maybe that would have been right. Thalia is pretty good here, just to kind of slow the spells down. But at the same time, like getting another like Warden plus Inspector, we can probably get this thing into the air, which feels pretty good. Uh, we might want to get the Adversary going for life, uh, but I think the two one drops actually is what I want to do. Okay, Recruiter is great, but we, again, need the land. Okay, there's the land. Um, yeah, I think we just, we just need the land eventually for other things. So I guess we take land here. And then I think we leave the inspector back just to try to force the issue with the scamp. On the other hand, like if they have like another monstrous rage, I don't love like how much damage they can do to us here. So I think maybe we do, hmm. I feel like they have another rage or something. I think we, we probably want to contain the scamp right now. And then I think we just take the swift spear.
Now I think we, yeah, I, I guess they're like a big spell deck, so we probably want Thalia here to restrict their access to mana. And then maybe we can set up another land on top for our adversary. Okay, that feels pretty good. I'm not sure we want to make this thing a 3-4 right now. Um, because I like having kind of this extra toughness for them to chew through. So I think we just leave it as a 2-3. And then just push with the warden here. What does this thing do? Okay, 3-1, haste, lifelink. Trample. So we can kill that with Thalia. And then I think... I guess we just double block this. Because they can't cast any more spells, so we'll just do it like that. And now I think we probably, let's see, we can hit him for seven, nine, 11, not quite lethal. Again, I think we wanna be a little careful here and maybe keep some of these guys back, just kind of slow roll it. Yeah, I think I wanna leave these other guys back just to be super safe. Cell sword. Okay, yeah, I guess we couldn't block that. So I think, again, in hindsight, probably killing the scamp at the first opportunity would have been the, the right move. I suppose any deck where you see a scamp, you probably want to just kill it on sight. So I think at the very like early turns of that game, blocking the scamp with our 2-3 warden to force the issue... Okay, this hand also looks good. <laughs> but the nice thing is that I think like these were all like, yes, they were mistakes, but they were winnable games um, had I played them correctly. You have such a small margin of error in uh, the mono red or the like the gruel matchup that uh, yeah. So hopefully you guys can, you know, <laughs> see me making the mistakes so you guys don't have to. But I think the deck is quite capable. So I am tempted to just go Adversary here. Um, the thing is, I do want to get Knight Errant going. And so I think getting the two creatures out is maybe a little safer to make that happen. You know, that being said, like, if we're going to play this, we want to be able to attack with it in the next turn. 
So I think I'm just going to go for the double inspector play here. And then I am going to get in with the veteran. I'm not planning to block. So if they attack here, I'm planning to just let it through. Unless they're tapped out. Okay, and unfortunately they did kill one of the creatures, so we can't go like adversary into Night Errant. We just go Knight Errant here and hope we can survive. Okay, extra life is really great. It's going to be really close though. If they have any kind of extra pump in their hand, this could just go south so fast. Okay, well that was nice. Now we can go veteran. Into adversary. Into knight errant, I think is the play. I guess we gain two by playing the Knight Errant here, but we also will be taking two from not having a blocker. But I think... Yeah, I think we want to leave, like, Adversary up to block. So even though this could, like, take down one of these, we want to gain the life. Um, we could tap out and hope to get a one drop, but if we whiff, it's so bad. So I think we just do it this way to ensure that we have at least two blockers. We probably want Thalia here, and we've already got a recruiter, so we want probably a one drop to go with it. Maybe initiate. Yeah, I could see initiate being good here. Okay, so they're just planning just to swarm us. <clears throat> I think we win this battle, though. Yeah, and another veteran. So if we just go, like, initiate plus recruiter, how much is that? That's three... Six... Um... Plus 10, 16, yeah, they're just dead. Okay, that works. Alright, so let's have a look at the stats. So unfortunately, the only... Okay, so the only um, games here that I've recorded were the ones that we just did. We went two and three, so not a great showing here for this. Um, however, it was doing very well earlier today on my tablet, so I do think it's a good deck. I think it has a lot of game, um, especially against some of the, the combo decks. So. 
I do still think it's a good deck. And a lot of these games here that I actually lost, I think were winnable had I played them a little bit better. So I think that the potential was there. Um, I know some of you are certainly better players than I am. Um, even though I've been able to you know, hit top 250 Mythic, um, I do think there are many, many better players than me. So take it for what you will. Anyways, thanks guys for watching, and I think you guys are awesome. So thank you so much again for being here. We'll see you tomorrow.